Hello and welcome to another video by Help you Excel. Today I'm going to go into custom events in Microsoft Access. And they can be a little hard to wrap your head around if you're not used to them. So I'm going to start from scratch on this video. There's I have no code written. I'm just going to um, show you how to use custom events to pass information between two forms in Microsoft Access. Okay. So like I said, I have no code written. Here's my form. I'm just going to put a text box on here. I'm going to give it a name. Text return value. And I'm just going to delete that. I don't need it for right now. And we're going to put in a button. Not trying to make this pretty. All this button is going to do is it's going to open another form that I'm going to create here in a minute. That form will gather some information and then we're going to put that value in this text box here. So we're going to open another form and then we're going to grab the information typed in that form and we're going to stick it in here. Okay. So for now, that form is done. I'm going to call this our calling form because that's the form that's going to call our other one. Let's start another form. And I'm going to name this form my called form. This is the one that we are going to call. So basically, I'm going to make like a custom dialog box. Let's put in a... Now let's skip the logo. I was going to put in a logo, but okay. Let's give this a name. Text user entered data. For now, we're just going to delete that. We're going to put in a button. just going to call this button OK, caption OK, all right, now single form allow form view, yes, we don't want data sheet view or layout view, fit the screen, we do not want record selectors or navigation. We don't want scroll bars, we don't want the control box, we don't want min max, and we want to change our border style oops, to dialog. We're going to make it a pop up and we're going to make it modal. Now this is essentially going to work the same as like a input box that's built into access. Um, but you can't style those input boxes and they're limited. There's just a lot of things that you can't do with those. Plus there's other applications for this. So, all right, let's get into the code on this guy. So to do an event, up in the general declaration er areas, you have to declare it there. Public event, give it a name, button, OK, click, user entered string as string, and there you go. We've created an event. Now, what is that going to do? Um, when I call this form later on, I can listen for this event and then I can grab that information that's in that variable. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here on this event, dim str buffer 
No, no, I don't even need to do that. So when this button is clicked, I'm going to raise that event. So you just type raise event, one word. You'll see it gives me intelligence. I only have one. Okay, so I'm going to raise the event. I'm going to pass into it the value that's in my text box. And I'm just doing a check, so in case it's null, we convert that to empty set. Otherwise, you could get errors. I don't want errors. Okay, so all this form is going to do, it's going to open up, let you type something here. When you click this button, it's going to raise my event, and it's going to pass to it the value that's in that text field. Okay, now, so this form is done, that's it. In my... Um, calling form. Now I need to use, I need to put some more code in here. Let's make this just a little prettier. Now, up here, again, in the general declaration area, I'm going to dimension a variable that's going to represent my called form. Okay, the with events keyword is important. Okay, so we're going to instantiate it. And make it visible. That's just going to make the form show up. Okay, now, as of right now, we're still not going to get that value from the form, the way you, from the called form. The way you do that is up here, is my object list. I can choose called form. And then this is my list of uh, methods, properties, events available on that form. There's only one, so it opened that up for me automatically. Here's my user entered string. So now I can say me.text.value equals user entered string. So not a whole lot of code. It's just kind of a lot to get your head wrapped around. All right, so let's step through this and we'll see what this is going to look like. All right, so this is my calling form. I click here. It's going to open my, it's going to instantiate a variable, which creates an instance of my called form. And then it's going to make it visible. That's all it's going to do. Oops. Yeah, yeah, fine. All right, so here's my called form. You see it's a pop-up box. There's my original form. Now I can type in here whatever I want. When I click OK, now it's going to raise that event. So here's my button click OK event. And now I'm going to call my custom event. And it when that event is called, now this is the calling form listening to that event. So hello world, okay, me.text return value equals user entered string. Okay, so there it is. Now I could type whatever and it'll put it in there. Now, typically, once you've gathered your data, you want this form to go away. It's very easy to do. So this is my calling form. This is the event that triggers when they click OK. And I can just say set 
call form equal to nothing. And that will make that form then go away. Okay. Open the form, gather some input, click OK, and that value then goes back to my calling form. So one more time, let's just review what we did here, because like I said, it's until you get your head wrapped around it, it's kind of confusing. Okay, so we've got a form. This is my calling form. This one is going to call and instantiate this form. So you click this button, and it's just going to set the called form equal to a new instance of this form. And one thing I should point out, I find it the easiest to refer to forms in this format. As long as your form has one single line of code, even if all that code is, like literally all you have to do is build event and have it have a form load and like do a comment or something. That's literally all it has to have. You just have to have at least one line of code and then you can refer to the form. Let me show you. Uh, now I don't have any events, so. Let's comment that out because I don't have any events right now, so I can't do that. Okay, so as long as the form that you're calling has even one line of code, and you'll see this called form now, it's got two lines of code. They don't actually even do anything, but there's code in here then now you can um, refer to this uh, called form as new and you'll see it shows up as a data type in your IntelliSense. Oops, set, yeah, equals to. Okay, if you don't have any code at all, like if this is all commented out, and you have zero code. Actually, I think you have to physically delete this in order to make it go away, but I'm not sure. Yeah, even though the code commented out, it recognizes it in IntelliSense. And then you can use the names the, the way they appear in VBA instead of trying to do all this forms, this, all of that nonsense, those references can get really long and convoluted that way. So whenever I build a form, I always give it at least one line of code. And you'll see that, um, let me show you another example. Yes, create, let's go to form design. And if I just save this, there's no code at all. You'll see no code form is here. If I go Alt F11, that form doesn't show up in my list of VBA objects because there's not a single line of code in that form. So you can't refer to it in this way. If I were to try to do a form name, dim form name as new uh, form, no code form, it's not there. You can't refer to the form that way at all. But as soon as you put in one single line of code, even if all you do is that and just, it doesn't matter, just any code at all. Now, if I close this, I can go in here to my calling form, dim, uh, no code as new form no code form there it is in your IntelliSense there it is in your VBA object list so I just think it's a whole lot easier to deal with forms in that way than it is all of this forms exclamation and trying to figure out which forms are loaded and which ones aren't it's just a real pain so there's a 
little side tip that wasn't really um, the point of this video, but a little side tip. All right, so let's put this back the way it was. <laughs> That's good. Call form. We're going to uncomment all this. Delete that. All right. And let's just walk through this one more time. Try to wrap our heads around this. Okay. Calling form. When I click this, once again, calling form. instantiates my variable that I've got up here as a new instance of form underscore called form and you can see that's the name as it exists in VBA just doing this though doesn't make the form visible then you have to make it visible okay there it is oops now, when I type in here, and when I click OK, it's going to raise this event with whatever value I put in the text box. And then it's going to pass it back to here. This is where it's listening. This is in my calling form, the one that I opened initially. It's listening for that event to happen puts the value in my text box and then tells the form to close. So when I click OK, this event fires, puts the value in my text box, closes the form. Okay. Now this isn't a very useful application of this, but um, it can be used to great effect with other things. So for example, I had a previous video where I showed um, how I did this, but I'm using the same technique here. So here's my main form. This is loading a search form. And then I have an event that says when I double click on this, it triggers a custom event, takes that value, and then it loads it into this customer field. All right, if you have any questions, as always, you can reach out to me at paul at huxl.com by email. Find me on my website, huxl.com. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.